to The Life, an E! News media presentation. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. In this, the school's 150th year, our new name pays homage to the illustrious past of Brooklyn Friends and The Life, the student-run newspaper that had a 60-year run. This week in the preschool, Maura and Joy presented a science lesson to the Green and Blue Room children that reflected a cross-disciplinary approach. It was all about growing things and the all-important morning snack. The students harvested lettuce from Greenie, the aeroponic garden tower, and made their own homegrown salad snack. They saw firsthand how tiny seeds could grow into delicious greens with the help of air, water, and light, and contrasted plants grown in soil with the lettuce and herbs grown in greenie. On this week's show, we will be featuring two little big stories in the visual and performing arts that also feature cross-disciplinary approach to teaching and learning. But first, these community announcements. Did you know that Saturday, January 27th is our third and fourth grade math and family science day? It will be held from 10 o'clock until 11.30 a.m. in the Pearl Street Cafeteria. Hi, everyone is invited to a special event on Monday, January 29th to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the founding of Brooklyn Friends School. It will take place at 6.30 p.m. at the Brooklyn Historical Society. And the middle school, chamber, and assemble will be performing. Save the dates of February 9th and 10th for the middle school play, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. It's a must-see. Online ticket reservations will start next week. Pearl the Panther wants to see you at the game. So check out all your favorite Panther teams going to bfsathletics.org. Come out and show your blue pride! Last year, Puerto Rico was battered by hurricanes Irma and Maria, devastating all aspects of the island's existence. BFS parent Carolina de la Valle was moved by her concern for the families of Puerto Rico and decided to take action. By utilizing her artistic talents as a painter, she created a project entitled Blue Skies, A Project of Hope, producing paintings of cloudscapes to sell online. Net proceeds from the project go to Para la Naturaleza, an environmental nonprofit organization that is dedicated to Puerto Rico relief efforts. Carolina came to Tina Piccolo's painting class to demonstrate her artistic process and to encourage students to participate in the effort. Everything that happened with the hurricanes was so heartbreaking that I thought to myself, like, I wish I could do something other than just give money. Is there something that I can do? Is there, what can I come up with to help? Our students will be rendering sky and cloudscape paintings, and Carolina has offered to put student work up on her site to benefit Para la Naturaleza. BFS has a social justice approach to service learning grounded in community, accountability, reciprocity, and equity. This approach encourages students to see themselves as agents of change, to partner with organizations and leaders in the community, and use the experience of service and civic engagement to respond to inequities and injustice. The main uh, character is the sky, not necessarily the land. So I think it's okay to minimize. Let's go with something really, really simple. Okay, so I love these big giant clouds. I love how they sit in perspective. I always mix one very pale gray, which is your shadow on your clouds, and then your whites. And that's really all I need. And then I need a separate set that would work for your landscape.
So let's just see what happened here. And we'll take off our little tape. Thank you, Carolina, for offering our students another way to engage with their community and support uh, the Puerto Rican relief effort. This is Noel Quinones signing off, reporting for the life. Dear friends, it has never been more important to teach our students the skills and values necessary to effectively communicate in today's digital world. Since 2000, our film festival has given voice to student filmmakers from friend schools worldwide. Each year, we ask our network of Quaker schools to submit films and public service announcements that celebrate our diversity and reflect our shared values. For complete details, go to bridgefilmfestival.org. Let your films speak. So in fifth grade, um, we teach Kung Fu in dance class because the fifth grade studies ancient civilization. Um, they're studying ancient India now, and they're talking about China next. And so we try to have the dance curriculum parallel what they're learning in humanities. And so when they learn about China, we do some traditional Chinese dance as well as some traditional Chinese martial arts. And I was providing an introduction to uh, Shaolin Kung Fu with my former student, alumni, Reed Jones. And make sure, like, I was on time to teach classes, on time to help people out. I had to know what I was talking about so that people stayed safe when they came to practice. So I first met Reed when he was in my fifth grade science class. And I was teaching humanities at the time, too. And um, I invited my martial arts teacher to come in to be a guest teacher in the dance class. And Reed really enjoyed the class. And so I convinced him to come to class with me outside of school. And that was the beginning of a 12-year relationship training together. And you know, he was my student before, and now it's wonderful to have him as my brother. So it's made me, yeah, it's made me more well-rounded, I think, as a whole. I don't know about you, like, I mean, I feel that's different to a woman, but I know that for me, martial arts helped me develop a lot of confidence and helped me as a teacher. Like, it's not about, like, fighting. I mean, I feel also confident I could defend myself if I had to, but also just, like, everyday confidence, posture, breathing, health. Highly recommended for all genders. This is a ready stance. We all start the class with bowing. I think it's important for fifth graders to be introduced to martial arts. I think there's a lot of stereotypes about martial arts in our society and it's good for them to have some real information about what it is. Um, so we try to expose students to many forms of movement. You know, we obviously don't want them to fight each other, but a lot of the lessons you can learn from martial arts like self-discipline, awareness, responsibility, respect, are all really important life lessons. Okay. So I think it's good for students to see their teachers doing something besides teaching. I think the students were looking at me in a little bit of a different way after the class because they know that I'm not just the lady in the science room that teaches science, but I also do these other things outside of the school. And so many faculty members at Brooklyn Friends have these really interesting careers and talents and you know other things that they do outside of the school. And I think one thing that's really great about the school is that we see each other as well-rounded people and not just as people playing a role, um, but there's lots of opportunities for kids and teachers to see each other as humans with full and wonderful lives and interests. No, you'd only use this to defend yourself. If you were in danger, real martial arts never get in a fight, right? We talked about this yesterday. Try not to do this. Try to punch. See how I finish my punch? My
Thank you to everyone who made today's show possible. And remember to let your life speak.